Okay? So that's the final element formulation. The last thing we need to do is just briefly discuss how we come up with the element shape functions. And so let's consider what we call a constant strain triangle. And we call it a constant strain, or CST, even though it has nothing to do with strain. We call it that just because it has three nodes, which in a solid mechanics setting would lead to a linear, uh, a linear interpolation of the displacement field. And of course, the first derivative of displacement is strain, so then you have a constant strain across the element. And that's why it's called that. But nevertheless, we can use it to solve scalar diffusion problems. And so what we do here is we interpolate across the element a field that's linear. And of course, we have x in this case is 1, x, y. And then we just sort of follow our, our same rules where, so we have u1, u2, and U3, we evaluate it at the three points. <coughs> so we have 1, x1, y1, 1, x2, y2, 1, x3, y3. C1, C2, C3. So this is our so-called A matrix. And from that, we can develop our shape functions, right, just through the same process of x dot inverse of A. N equals x A inverse. And let's work an example. So we have a, if we have a triangle whose endpoints are at 2, 1, 5, 3, and 3, 4, then we can say that uh, x in this case is 1xy. A is equal to X evaluated at the point X is equal to 2 and Y equal to 1. And X evaluated at X equal to 5, Y equal to 3. And x evaluated at little x equal to 3, y equal, oops, y equal to 4. And so then we have x dot inverse a. And there are three shape functions for this example. So we also might have a linear 
rectangle. Element, rectangular element. These are usually called quads, quad four. Because it's just a quadrilateral, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a perfect rectangle. But uh, if we have a rectangle. With nodes one, two, three, and four. Length A, height B. Uh, then we can follow the same procedure here. I won't go through it, but I'll write down what the shape functions are. You can also have a quadratic triangle. So now we're going to use a quadratic interpolant, or u of h x y is going to be c1 plus c2 x plus c3 y plus c4 xy plus c5 x squared plus c6 y squared. I guess I should have mentioned that I didn't write down what the uh, interpolant is up here, but it's C1 plus C2x plus C3y plus C4xy. All right, so we need four because we have four nodes. And so, and then we just choose uh, xy and xy for completeness. So when we go to quadratic, we just have two more terms. And for a triangle, then you, a quadratic triangle, you're going to have six nodes. All right, so the three original corner nodes, and they're usually labeled one, two, three, and then the mid-side nodes, four, five, and six. And so the last one we're going to talk about is a quad eight. So it's sort of the same idea. You have the original one, two, three, four uh, original nodes, and then you have the mid-side nodes, five, six, seven, and eight. And the interpolant here would be x, y is equal to c1 plus c2, x plus c3, y plus C4, XY, plus C5, X squared, plus C6, Y squared, plus C7, X, Y squared, plus C8, X squared, Y. All right, so there's a couple of different options for elements uh, that we may actually use in this class. And you can keep going on up. You can add a, a midpoint node, uh, I think so-called serendipity elements, to this guy, which would complete this guy. C9 is x squared, y squared. Uh, 
And you could go on adding uh, more and more, but uh, if you need higher order interpolants. So I think this is where I'll stop today.